This is Diana. And at 63 years old, she has nothing to show for it. So do you have like a saving account? No. Retirement accounts? No. Investments? No. A lot of which is due to her constant addictive behavior. Where do you spend your money? Shopping. Despite her situation, she continues to max out on her credit cards. You gotta have money. And the only money I would have is a credit card. <gasps> Wait! In this video, Diana will need to realize that if she continues this way, there will be only one option. Bankruptcy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Finance Action, the show where we take action. My name is Roman, and today I have the pleasure to be with Diana. Diana, how are you doing? I'm doing very well today, thank you. Awesome. Let's look at your profile. Diana, you are 63 years old, you're originally from Seattle, and you currently live as well in the city uh, nearby Seattle named Federal Way. You are currently retired, but you used to work in customer service for airline companies, and also right now you are working as a self employed is that right yes looking at the way you've rated your personal finances from chilling to mayday diana at 63 you rated yourself as mayday, mayday. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough to see you will see there is a ton to diana and i am so excited to bring you into this story because there have been recent decisions that we're going to dive together and see whether you've made the right choice or not okay but first, I want to hear a little bit from you, Diana. You read yourself as Mayday. Tell me more. What's going on? I have been spending money like I'm still making a paycheck, okay. uh, which I am not. And uh, I piled up a lot of credit card debt. Uh, most of it was shopping. Okay. I got to a place where the monthly payments were more, because there were three credit cards, <laughs> yep. and the monthly payments were more than I was making a month. And I just looked at it and I went, I can't do it. I can't do it. I've like exhausted every you know bit of extra money that I had in my account. I, it, it's gone. Um, what am I going to do? That's right. Now I want to dive a little bit into your trail of life because Diana has a very interesting experience and story. Bring me a little bit into what was your life? I worked for both Alaska Airlines and British Airways. Uh, I'm currently separated from my husband, but I was married. And we had just a typical life. You know, we worked, we had kids, we did stuff. And then the kids grew up, then they went to college, then they graduated from college, then they, you know, uh, so that you, you weren't involved in your child's life anymore. And I gained weight. I, I am a stress eater. Uh, I eat when I'm bored and paid for gastric bypass surgery. So I, d I had it. And I just went for the like most intense one that you can. And I began to lose weight very fast. My family was like, oh, you know, this is so great. And you've got lots of energy. We go zip lining, go hiking. And I wanted to get into theater uh, because now I wasn't, I felt confident uh, physically, and I knew that I was talented. And so I auditioned for some shows, and I got parts, and I, for, I was in a movie, and I was excited about this. And my husband wasn't. He thought that was stupid. He thought it was stupid, it was a waste of time and that I should be focusing on, you know, anything else but that. And eventually I completely pulled away and uh, we separated. Okay. And yeah, that was like about 15 years ago. We've just been kind of lazy and never bothered to go through with, you know, the 
final final thing. And right now I'm just waiting until he retires. And at that point, we'll probably, you know, finalize a divorce. Okay. Okay. Um, very interesting. And you will see into what financial situation our friend Diana has put herself. There's questions that I have for you as to some of the behaviors that you had over that time. <clears throat> That's right. But overall, you would say that you had a fairly regular Yes. Let's say American life. I don't want to generalize the divorce aspect, but for the most part, kind of a family entity. You were working, you know, regular jobs. Mm -hmm. um, we have a house, you know, uh, cars in the garage, wonderful children. Um, everything was great. Every, everything was, was just fine, yeah. After I separated from my husband, which was in 2009, um, I moved out and... I began to drink too much because I was lonely. I at <laughs> I got a DUI in a parking lot. I hadn't even moved my car. <laughs> I just got in, I had the keys in my hand and there was a motorcycle cop that was watching. And he came right over because technically you're in control of a vehicle. That's right. A DUI is really expensive. Yep. You have to hire a lawyer. Um, you have fines to pay, classes that they force you to take. It and is tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, and, and you have to go to treatment and stuff like that because this is all required. Insurance, by the court. premiums, and I, so on. It's a disaster. Uh, yes, it's a disaster, and I had to use um, my, uh, like, 401k. Mm. I had to withdraw every penny in retirement accounts that I had. That was the, how was I going to pay for all of this stuff? So uh, don't drink and drive. Yep. <laughs> just don't. Don't get in a car with keys in your hand. Um, just don't because it's a disaster. Okay. And uh, we can see that's probably some of the reason, although it's been quite uh, some time, you never recovered from that? No. I, I, I didn't have uh, any retirement savings anymore. Thank you so much, Diana, for bringing us through some component of the story. And you've created <laughs> a natural transition to our first segment on our show, which looks at your income and your assets. Hey, guys, if you like this type of content, we please encourage you to continue following along as well as explore the variety of stories that we have available on this channel. I try to bring as much variety as I can. So please explore as well as previous videos. Leave a like, this helps us tremendously. And uh, let's get back to our content. Let's look at your income. So you are 63 years old. Uh, what income do you pull this from? You mentioned you're not working, right? So you're right. probably gathering... Uh, Social security? Yes. I do not work at a regular job earning a paycheck okay. anymore. I collect Social security. With an early payment because you took it at probably 62, 62. instead of 67. Right. But, but 62 is the... F is the first year. The first that, that you can apply for it. And How much I, do they pay you? $1,287 a month. Mm. Monthly okay. payment. Um, the thing is that... My mother is 92 years old and cannot live on her own. Okay. So I stay with her most of the time uh, and fix her food and do her laundry. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way you can live. Yeah. With what because you have. she can't do any of that stuff. She can't load a dishwasher. So uh, that's what I do. And... I can't. I couldn't have a, a full time job, uh, even a part time job. Why? Be because she needs me. If if something happens, if she has like a dementia spell or um, she falls, you know, uh, need to be there. I, I need to be there. I just feel so trapped, and I can't do anything that I want to do. There's nothing for me. So what what else in terms of income? do you make? I am now getting my pension oh, from Alaska okay. Airlines. How which, much are we speaking? A little over $300. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Any yeah. other source of income? Hmm? Do you have any other source of income? No. Are you expecting any other source of income? Yes. Okay, share the juice. What are you expecting? <gasps> um, when my husband retires, which will be like two more school years. Okay. He will be getting a pension. Okay. I mean, that's why he's not retired now. He's waiting because the pension increases incrementally to... Mm -hmm. Anyway, I will be entitled to half of his pension. Does he know that? No. It's not really been brought up. Are you going to do it? I'm going to get a lawyer. And I'm going to... Why have you two guys spoken about it? There was one time when I started to say something and he just blew up. Like, don't even think that you're going to be able to get your hands on anything. Just don't even think it. So I didn't think about it for a while. And then I was looking more into, you know, and I saw that it, a pension is considered community property. And in a divorce, it has to be split in half. Okay. Everything has to be split in half. <laughs> so there's <clears throat> that. Okay. Um, all right. For the purpose of our calculation today, it is not going to be accounted for today. No, not for a couple of years. For a couple of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Diana, because uh, guys, uh, there is so much more behind this uh, that we'll be speaking uh, together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's keep following right now as we look into your current income, Diana. Okay. You're making 1,450 net social security. You're not uh, picking up tax on and then a little bit of uh, pension from... Um, from your airline company, that brings you at around 17700 per year? I, I guess so, yeah. When we look at the median in the United States, 50% make more, 50% make less. For your age bracket, between 55 and 64, the median is at $59,000. Uh, yeah, I'm like below the poverty level. Yes, well, that's because also, uh, I guess, you, I was going to say you are not working, but you are also a caretaker for yeah. your mother. Okay, okay. Let's see how all of this has brought you to the situation that you find yourself today with your assets. Thank you, Diana, for providing with me your statement. <clears throat> and I see on your checking account a balance of 641. Yes. Do you have anything else? No. Hold on. So do you have like a saving account? No. Retirement accounts? No. Investments? No. Wait, so what about a car? I have a car. Oh, you have a car. Okay, yes. what uh, do you drive? Old Honda Accord. How, what, what age? I, I, th I think it's like about 2008. 2008 on the Accord? I, yeah, I think so. Okay. Think something like that. If I look at the Kelly Blue Book value for it today, you're looking at 7,700. And it's fully paid off, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was my mother's car. She wasn't able to drive anymore, so she gave it to me. Do you have any house equity? Yes. Okay. My husband and I own a house. Uh, currently, he lives there because I am living. What is the value of the house? Um, probably, you know, depending on the market, it kind of fluctuates between 400000 500000 Okay, but I also, do uh, you have a mortgage on it? Yes, we do have a mortgage on it, and that's about a hundred and thirty-nine thousand. Okay. Yeah. So together on equ in equity, assuming the house is being sold for about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I'll say that. That brings you at an equity of three hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Okay. If you have 50% of it, you're looking at $155,000. Right. That would be what I would be entitled to. Okay. And but we that's split it evenly, you know. Right. 
Um, okay. That's definitely a saving grace. Uh, what about your mother? So your mother is 92 years old. My we mother have to is 92. Be realistic. Yes. Uh, is she, there any money there? Yeah, my mother has about $200,000. Are you going to be 100% um, the dependent on this one? No, she uh, has uh, divided it. Okay. Um, between uh, my my son, my daughter. How me. much are you getting? One quarter goes to my son. One quarter goes to my daughter. So now there's half of that left. I get two thirds of that. My husband gets one third of that. Of what's remaining? Of what's remaining. Okay, so we're looking for you at around sixty-six thousand dollars. Okay. The question that I have for you is, why the heck? Does your husband has some form of payment to your mother? Oh, because she loves him and he is so good to her. I he comes by for visits and stuff and if I am gone, like if I'm out of town, he comes and checks on her. I see. Okay, Diana. So, if we look a little bit as to the value of everything that you would sell today, um, I mean, you have uh, $600 on your account, uh, plus the car, so you're looking at, what, uh, $8,300, okay? Uh, well, that's because of the car. Oh, well, yeah, but, but you know. If you have the house and the upcoming inheritance from your mother, you're looking at around $230,000. And... I would prefer to do something practical with that money. That's right. And I'm afraid that I am going to continue on my spending path and get that, further into debt. Yeah, I that that money would disappear and I'm going to need that. So so I'm going to ask you something. Okay. You are 63 years old, that uh, Diana. Which you, yeah, way, you keep bringing I love, that I love, up. I love the <laughs> I love the name. How did you not save for retirement during your working life? Because today you're showing with seven hundred dollars. So if there was not your mom or your husband, but you know you guys have not been together for a while, he's been paying the mortgage. Yep. What would you have done? I just never, I, I did like a lot of... What, what, when did you stop working for Alaska? 1999. <whistles> yeah. Okay. Okay, so then the DUI was after. I, I, I took what they call an early out. They gave me $10,000 and flight benefits for life. Why did you take that out? Uh, because I just... My kids were little. And okay. But then your, your children grew up. Well, they, you were not with your husband. Yeah. What happened during that period here? Well, you were I, like, it's, you know, it's a long time. Yeah. What happened? I just, uh, I was never at one job for a very long time. And you never thought about putting any money for retirement? You never kind of... I never like got into a career with anybody long enough that I could set up like a 401k. Um, what was the maximum of money that you've had been able to save at once? Because it, there seems to be a pattern. Yes. At of one shopping. time. <laughs> yeah. At one time I had $11,000 in my checking account. Okay. I spent it. Right away. Shopping. I spent it. What's the thing behind this kind of serial shopper? Well, because I wasn't eating, you know, I'd lost weight and stuff. And so, you know, eat, uh, eating was my like stress relief thing. Shopping became what I mm -hmm. did. Okay. So you're kind of transitioning. At Amazon. Yep. That's oh. right. <clears throat> yeah, for a long time it was just shopping on Amazon. Okay. So, guys, uh, that is going to be, again, you're bringing me the smoothest transitions, Diana, <laughs> to our next section, your expense and your debt. I'm going to start uh, first with a eh, pretty nice one, Chase. Yeah. 1750 mm -hmm. <clears throat> My Chase Amazon 
account. Yep. Well, if this was only it, Elon. Right? It's not Elon Musk, but I don't know who is Elon okay. is. Okay. It's uh, four thousand six hundred and nineteen. What is this? Okay. All right. Elon Financial is associated with a bank called Umpqua. Used to be Columbia Bank. Now it's Umpqua. Okay. Um. They said that I could have an account with them that would be interest free. It's not right now, huh? No, all right, no, no, all right. So this was so I was like considering that, and I had more debt. So oh, so this was a th ah, it was a, a balance transfer. Th it was. It was. I ha this money was on my Alaska Airlines. Visa card, where I got miles for every dollar I spent, and I spent over six thousand dollars, and I racked that up really fast. And you never paid it. Doing cosmetic stuff. Like what? Like Botox and fillers and lip plumping and. I was so six, I was sixty two and I wanted to. Hold on, you, you're sixty three. That was not I'm too long ago. Now that was not too long ago. I just so, so if if it was like twenty years ago, well, actually no, the debt will no, be no. long gone. All right. So here's the thing: is that at this point you now, have seven seven hundred dollar bucks on your account and you're going for a cosmetic. Uh, yeah. Well, stuff? well, I mean, if you want to me mention how much I owed to Discover, in addition, fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty three. Between that. And what was on my Alaska Airlines card and what I owed to the Chase card, I had the, uh, the monthly payments for those three separate accounts were more than I had coming in. But you were still doing cosmetics. I had a credit card. <laughs> I was getting miles for it. See, no, 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 that's not. Uh. Yeah, yeah, because like if I if I've spent three thousand dollars within the first three months, I got a companion fare ticket. Yeah, but and why, why would you need a companion fare if you had to take the early checkout from Alaska, where you told me that you have unlimited flights? Well, because I can give it to somebody. No, but you you have no money and you want to give the world to everyone, Diana. Come all right, on. All right, so, but, you know, all right. So, so look, I had this money, right? Uh, that I, I, I had all of this debt on the Alaska Airlines Visa card. And I had these miles that I was building up because I wanted to... Uh, I earned miles. That's a trick. That's a trick. I, well, By the way, like, that's a actually, massive with trick. The, with, uh, along with the the you know the three thousand dollars that when you hit that mark, then you also got like a bonus miles. Yeah, I know they bonus, they bonus, Lots bonus, of bonus, miles, bonus, like bonus. thousands. Okay, anyway, I currently have like about seventy eight thousand miles in the Alaska Airlines mileage plan because of the money I spent. I read that you have $78,000 on your checking account. Right, so but that's, that's enough- $78,000 miles. It, it's enough money for something that I really want. But aside from that, okay, more money owed than I have coming in. I cannot pay these credit cards I'm gonna anymore. I'm going to ask you a question. That's, Diana, I am looking forward to hear what you're going to say to me. Were you continuing to do cosmetic knowing that you couldn't pay for it and that you were already upside down? Yes. What's going through your mind? Well, actually, what, what, I... So you're like, oh, you know, it's, uh, actually, it's... If you were like 20 years old, you say, oh, maybe I can pull that off, you know, in, in a tried, couple of years. I tried. I tried. You're unemployed. I didn't realize that I kind of like had a contract with this place. Right. And so I had to kind of stay with it into January. How much was it per month? Uh, well, it was $199 per month, but then I got it changed in December to only $99 a month for that I owed for this contract. And then, you know, like along with the contract, you got a cosmetic service. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I don't, I, I can't pay, I can't pay all of this. I don't have the money. And so I thought, okay, 
there's like debt consolidation and they'll like take over and they'll handle financial stuff. Okay, so so here I want to step quickly and interject as to the principle around debt consolidators. Right. Okay. Okay, so so the the whole principle of uh, what debt consolidation firms what they do is generally they approach you and I'm sure you've received a ton of mail about it. In fact, thank you for actually bringing some of them. Yeah, yeah, I brought. Yeah. Uh, here we have a perfect example of someone that say, oh, you know, you've been pre-selected for debt consolidation loans at an interest rate of five point ninety nine percent. Oh, by the way, you can borrow an extra ten thousand dollars. Yippee skippy! Assholes. Yeah, they want my money. See, credit card companies don't want you to pay them off. Yeah, so the, the way that the system works is they're going to tell you, and that's probably what happened to you, don't pay anything, you know, that's so that, and, and they are going to ask you, Jenny, that's not the system, to put money on the side mm -hmm. into an account that they have in escrow, so you could say. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, your cards are going to fall in collection, Right, and I'm gonna call the collection, negotiate on your behalf, and say, "Hey, you know, we have five thousand dollars because that's the amount of money that they've collected from you over every single month." Yeah. Uh, you know, let let us take the the five thousand dollars, and your debt is wiped out because uh, ultimately they are negotiators. All of these credit cards are then in arrears, right? They, they close the accounts. Yeah, of course. Um, What's your credit score yeah, right now? It's like in the five hundreds, and it's that's bad. That's really lousy credit score. Yeah. Um, I have money on the Alaska Airlines card. That card has to stay active for me to keep the 75,000 miles <laughs> that I've got on that, which is enough for the trip to New Zealand. What? What, what, what trip to New Zealand? Okay. My son has been living in Australia. He has an, uh, a girlfriend from that lives in Australia, her family. Um, they are coming up here for a visit. And after they visit with us for a couple of months, they are both moving to New Zealand. Okay. So I, you're gonna open you're gonna buy for them the tickets? No, I'm gonna take the ticket. <laughs> I'm gonna get a ticket for me to go and visit them. <laughs> so I can do the Lord of the Rings tour. Oh gosh. <laughs> With what money? With what money? That's just it. I have no money. I have no money. You know, you might be able to get there for free, but once you're there, you got to have money. And the only money I would have is a credit card. All right. So. <gasps> wait. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. So it, wait, are you going to, you're, you're telling me that you would spend your trip in New Zealand on the Alaska, because you've not maxed out your Alaskan credit card, I saw. Oh, okay. So, so what happened? So you're gonna put the spend. You're I, gonna put the spend of your uh, New no, Zealand trip on the credit card. I don't want to do that. But you would. No, no, I wouldn't because I don't want to do that. Okay, but here's what happened. Okay, <laughs> here's what happened. There's no money. There's no the, money. The, the debt consolidation people are are gonna like. Have me not pay the credit cards, right? And the card, the accounts are going to close. If that Alaska Airlines credit card closes, I lose my miles. Why did I spend $6,000 on that? You know, it, it would like be pointless if I lose those miles. So what I did is that through this Elon Financial Services, which is Umqua Bank, they wanted me to open an account with them, they would do a balance transfer, oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they sent money to the Alaska Airlines card. I paid off the Alaska Airlines card. Now all of the debt was over here on this credit card, which I never paid. If you didn't have your mom or your husband, and we haven't even tackled about some of the expenses, mm -hmm. I would consider for you bankruptcy. But you're telling me, Diana, you're still wanting to go play the game and have fun in New Zealand. 
I do still want to go to New Zealand, but here's the thing, you know, we talk about, yes, I get like half the pension. Yes, I get half the value of the house. Maybe I get an inheritance from my mother. I'm going to have then money. I don't want to spend it foolishly. I don't want to like be putting shit on credit cards. I don't want to spend every penny that I have. I want to use that money wisely, you know, I want to save money and then like... But you're telling me you want to save money, but the first thing you want to do with $700 on your account is well, to Well, I'm put... not going to go to New Zealand like soon. I, it would, because they've got to get settled. So, uh... you know, maybe six, maybe like in November. Uh, uh, we're not speaking years. We're speaking like a couple months. I know. So... You're not going to pull thousands in a couple months with social security and, uh, you know... Yeah, uh, right. And I don't, have, I don't, and I don't have all that stuff yet. You know, it's going to be years before. So I need to save money out of my social security account. Um, let's look at some of your expenses if this is even possible. How much do you pay for rent? I pay nothing for rent. Zero? Zero, because I'm my mother's caretaker. How much does your mother pay for rent? $5,500 a month. Shit. I know, shit. You've got to be. Yeah, I know. It's like outrageous. Why is she paying that much? Because I kind of talked her into it. Oh, so it's your fault? Well, yeah, basically. She was living... But you're saying shit and it's your fault. She didn't like where she was living. So I said, let okay, me put you into a, why let me put don't you into a... we move in together? Yep. The house that my husband is living in is very close. If the kids visit, then they're in the that area. So yeah, but not I every said, house in federal way is fifty five hundred. I know. So I said, let's move here because I thought I would do all of the activities. I would like do bingo, and you know, <laughs> this is this is what <laughs> they think makes it worthwhile. Plus, <clears throat> they give you dinner every night. <sighs> the decisions uh, taking aspect of uh, what you've done. Uh, It's not the greatest, no. I know. I, 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 I'm uh, not. She's not rolling on minions, neither. I'm not fiscally responsible, and I need to learn how to be. I would like to save a like a little bit of money here and there. I mean, like well, actually, like a, a set amount every save it like a, a vacation fund. Okay, I have my expenses. <laughs> I pay my expenses, and then I have a little bit that I save for a vacation fund. Because, come on, I can so, you, you keep telling me vacation, vacation, Tahiti, New Zealand, whatever. But I can But what about living? You're, you're you know, I'm not going to say the Asian game because I know you're not, you don't like it. But the first thing that comes to your mind every time is vacation. I can travel anywhere in the world, you know, for at least a very low rate if it's on another airline. If it's anywhere that Alaska yes, airlines Yes, but flies. wait, because you still, wait, 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 wait. You still have flight for life. Yes. And I, you're speaking to me about uh, maintaining your $5,000 credit card balance? Why don't you just take a flight that you have for life for free? See, I fly space available. I'm on standby. If I have, if I use those miles, that's positive space. You're willing to sacrifice massive interest and debt? I don't want to. I don't for, want to. Open, for a seat that you have reserved. But this seat is going to cost you like three times the cost of the freaking seat because you're delaying so much well, of that debt I, oh, instead it, of flying for free. I, I would fly, I could fly there for free, but the, right? The, and then I'm there and then I stay with my son and his girlfriend. But that's it. That's it. I know. I So but yeah. we'll be discussing about the, 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 the recommendation section. I mean, I'm still But I think need... you're overvaluing those freaking stupid mouths that are destroying your finances. When you could, because you have a ton of time for you, you know, I mean, as far as I know, you're not, uh, you know, working 50 hours a week. No, I'm not working. You I could mean, very well I, take I do, a free one. I do, I do the occasional film. And once I get enough okay, but you didn't even credits in your... under my belt, then that, like my, I could maybe do something that would pay me like, you know, a thousand dollars a day. Uh, plus, I'm sorry, but your mouths... They're not linked to your credit card. Your miles are linked to your account number. They are linked to your customer number. There is no way, no way that they're going to stuck you in a credit card for you to keep those miles. This would be unfair practice. Now that I'm thinking about it, there is no freaking way. You realize 
the aspect of what they are doing. They would stuck you in a credit card that you're paying a shit ton of interest so that you can maintain your miles. I presume your miles are linked to you as a customer. But I don't anything on that credit card right now. Yeah, because you're not paying dime. Well, no, I don't owe anything. I paid it off. Yeah, I mean, you haven't paid it off. You've made a balance transfer to another bank. Yeah, so the money that was on that credit card is yeah. now on the other credit card. Okay, we'll be discussing about this in our recommendation section. As you see, uh, such a living story with Diana, I like our interaction, and we'll see what that brings us together. Okay. As I look into some of the rest of your expense. So rent, peanuts, kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, working the bingo and dinner from uh, your mom. Okay. Phone, how much do you spend on phone? Phone, uh, nothing. Who, who pays for that? My husband pays for that. My soon-to-be ex-husband. Okay. What about, uh, like, uh, gas for your uh, car? I do uh, f- sometimes pay for my own gas, you know. Uh, I'll who, who else pays for that? Uh, my husband will, uh, if he's over visiting, he'll take the car and just fill it up. He's, he's a nice guy. Oh, okay. Just not a what about running. insurance, car insurance? He pays that. Well, hold on. So, so. What? But he pay, he's got a deal thing, right? So he gets a a big discount because it's his car and my car and my son's yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, but daughter. he's still paying for you. Yeah, he's still paying for me. So, he, what do you pay yourself? And he gives my mother mon- money every month. What? He gives my mother money every <laughs> month. How much does he give you? Fifteen hundred dollars. For who? Kind of like because I'm staying there. It's spousal support that isn't, like, legally binding. So the guy is paying for almost everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. But still, you want to go at this for the pension. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You have no mercy. I, I, it's legally, it's part of... <laughs> Property. <clears throat> it's it's part of the property, and the property has to be divided right down the middle. So, right. <clears throat> Where the heck do you spend your money? Shopping. <laughs> see, that's my What new- do you shop on? Because, I mean, I see a little bit on your statement, like the Timu and Amazon. Mm-hmm. But it's not thousands of dollars that disappear every month. And yeah, um, I'm not sure what I spent all of that money on. Please. I, I the only thing I can. You're make- showing me transactions on Timu that is like seventy dollars, thirty dollars, fifty-two dollars. Okay. Well, then I, I uh, was shopping where did you on spend Amazon your before I discovered Timu. Okay. Shopping. But, but but okay. So you spend like a thousand dollars per month on stuff. I don't remember. I just... Uh, selective memory? Hmm? Selective memory? You don't remember what you don't want to know? It might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, like, yeah, well. <laughs> it's so traumatic, I've, like... Oh, sorry, it's, oh, no. <laughs> it's gone out of my no, brain. No, man, I do, I, yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trauma shopping on Amazon. Uh, come on, there. Uh, I mean, I could come on, Diana. No, I couldn't come have spent $25,000 on Amazon. I don't know what I spent it all on, but I was just spending. I'm, I was spending money like I was still making money. And you're still doing it today? Uh, I've... No, I, I've, I've tapered it down quite a bit. Quite a bit. So, 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 if you're making fourteen hundred per month, mm-hmm. but you have seven hundred dollars on your account, your mom pays for everything, and your husband does even the bonus. Where is money going? Where there, there is money that's flowing through the drain that I'm not seeing on your accounts. Where is this money going? Sometimes I go, I go out. Where do you go when you go out? Like it karaoke, you know, okay. and maybe I would get food. And drinks and stuff like that with friends. There it is. Um, there it is. Yeah. Shopping, going Shopping, out, going vacation. Out. Yeah. Zero on savings. Right. Diana, when is this going to stop? It's got to stop now. It's got to stop. I, I just, I, I. It's decades of got to stop. Is when? No, but when? When do you think though that you're gonna actually stop? Next month, I'm going to stop shopping next month. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to show you physically, though. The, um, it's kind of coming as an intervention. The impact of the decisions that you've taken. Okay. 
how does that transition into dollar amounts, okay? And that brings me to our next segment, the money case. Welcome back as we think about the money case for you, Diana. So, if you didn't have <coughs> yeah, the presence my family. of your family, this is the situation that you would be putting yourself into. How much would you think you would be paying per year of interest? On your credit card. Oh, if I still had that credit card debt? Yeah, if you still were just working well, the geez, way you had it. I mean, uh, the interest rates were 26%, 27%, like that. 30. You know, um, that's it. it's huge. You think 2000 is enough? No. Yeah, no. You're actually really far from it. Yeah. You would be paying $6,286. Based on the debt that I yep. consolidated. That's a lot of money. This is interest. No principle. That's it is almost 50%, quite a little bit less, no. but 50% of your income. I know. That goes into it's interest. Terrible. Okay. So now the question that I'm going to ask you is, are you done living this life? Yes. I, I have to be. All right. So, like, I don't know. Maybe there's a... the meetings for debt people you know oh, debt anonymous. spenders anonymous <laughs> yeah i mean it's some form of addiction when you think yes about it, it is right? an addiction it absolutely is an addiction and you have a little bit of that addiction behavior oh in I'm, you. Uh, yes i have addiction. a very addictive personality yeah How, I, uh, uh, the, the biggest thing the biggest thing that i'm scared you know what it is is that in a couple of years, mm -hmm. once you start going to have money, yeah. you're not going to care and it's going to flow out in a couple of years and then you're going to have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I'm here because I need a plan. Okay. So let's think about a strategy that we can apply together. And it's going to be kind of a step-by-step, -step, okay? Number one. Did you know that because you were a family caregiver, you can apply for some form of compensation by the state? She has to be on Medicaid. She's not on Medicaid. Uh, she has she has Medicare. Yeah. And also a social a, a, a supplement. Mm -hmm. But so, she's supplemental not social security. She's not because Medicaid. You have to meet. I mean, she would technically meet disabled qualifications, but mm -hmm. she's just not doing that. Because the, the government can pay you up to $16 an hour for taking care of your loved ones. Yeah, if she was on Medicaid. There is also a, a program for veterans. Is that the case that applies to you, any veterans, or mm -hmm. your mom is a veteran? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing that potentially, potentially could work is um, a family caregiver contract. It could be some form of contract that you do with your mom, that you are employed by your mother. Mm -hmm. And that would allow you to earn a certain income. My husband gives my mother $1,500 a month. Does it goes to you? No, he gives it to her. But do you touch any of this? N oh, no. I mean, no. you know, I it mean, goes, it goes into, into your lifestyle. Yeah, life. It goes into her bank account. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't, spend her money very often. To me, uh, with much respect, uh, my friend Diana, it's kind of like the parents that's taking care of everything and you have a little bit of a stipend per month and you spend it on whatever. Your stipend is uh, the government with social security and your mom and your husbands are taking care of everything else. Mm -hmm. well, you, you are at an age of experience, but you still have the behaviors I know. of a teenage yeah, person uh, with impulse, much respect. Impulse. Huh? I, it's impulse control. I know. Yeah. There must have been something. How at some point you had $11,000 on your checking account. What did you do to earn that? 
working. And then when I wasn't working, I collected unemployment. Okay, but you were not spending that money. How at how did you get to eleven thousand dollars? I don't know. It just like accrued. It was just there. But you didn't use money. No, because I didn't. So something I, I, happened. It, it, yeah, I was. I, for, I, because like, you don't have to spend been, money. You don't might, have to spend a dime today to live. That's the thing. Your needs are zero. That's why I want to save the rest of the money. Well, except for like sundries. You But know? somehow you're expecting me here to pull a miracle. If in yourself, mentally, you're still gonna go on TMU and or, or Amazon and buy a bunch of shit. I don't want to buy a bunch of shit anymore. Okay. Well, there are apps that exist that's going to block you on this. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So you should potentially be considering app blockers. Number one, you should delete any form of online shopping app on your phone. Yes, 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 I should. Why, why the... I like shopping. So I you're telling just... me on one hand that you want me to find a miracle from you. But on the other, you tell me you like shopping. How am I supposed... To, there needs to be a change in behavior Yes. for you to take action. I need a plan. Okay. All right. Very simple. I give you $100 per month on shopping. I can... Less. 50. No, 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 no. Don't give me the BS. You spend hundreds on months right now on your wants. Okay? Yes. You spend hundreds. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're doing this yo-yo life. Yeah. I don't want to do it in your finances because what's going to happen is if you do, you limit yourself further than what I was potentially thinking for you is you're going to go to 50. You're going to hold 50 for a couple months. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to say, fuck it. And you're going to spend even more. I do not believe that having from 100 to zero, 100% to 0% is the most optimal way because what we are looking for is not an immediate chance. You're not looking here for a sprint. You still have decades in front of you, okay? And I told you, with the behavior that you've had in the past, if today you didn't have the support of others, you would be fighting for bankruptcy, okay? Right. So put that into yourself five years from now, when you're not going to have the golden exit door that you have today. And we have to think about how to maintain this mindset, how to not have you go through the swings of your impulse purchases. How do you think about a cash strategy, some form of cash envelope? Yes. Okay. It's, it's a massive envelope that has different budgets. Oh. And you have, oh, $20 for go out. $50 for groceries because the digital era doesn't seem to work well with you and your finances. <laughs> but people, but, but that's because the, the, the nature of money maybe is not just, it's a card. You don't care. It's a card. It's not physical money. You have to spend $400 on uh, equipment for your cameras. You go to the shop, you spend $400. It's different than just swiping a card that is instant payment. You don't even think about it. When you have money in hand, the concept of cash could be something that works for you because you would take that money out on a monthly basis, budget it accordingly, okay, uh -huh. and only use that cash to run your life. Never touch what's on your account. And guess why? Because I want you to completely forget savings, What I mean by that is if you get $1,400 per month mm -hmm. and you withdraw $1,000 for your living expenses, what is left on the account? $400. And that is the amount that I want you to start saving on a monthly basis. Okay. Well, keep in mind that the um, debt consolidation company takes a chunk. How much do they take right now? They take like three hundred and close to four hundred dollars. Close to four hundred dollars. Oh, so you want to? Oh, I see. So you're willing to pay extra? Yeah. But, to them, but but so how many credit cards on that debt consolidation? Three. So they have all of them. Yeah, they, they have, have all of them. They have everything. How long? Because there is a component around time. Okay. 
were they the one that set you up with the payments? They say, oh, you're going to own us this specific amount of money. Like they told you, hey, we need you to take 367. Yeah, yeah they said that they would take that money. They, they, I wouldn't overpay for people that do debt recovery because what they are looking for, they've made their math and they're looking for a specific period of time that your debt is going to fall into collection where they're going to come in, negotiate with the amount that they have collected. Mm -hmm. So my concern right. is that I'd rather you be more heavy on cash okay. than give it to them. They're going to rush the process because they want their fee and you're not going to have the greatest deal on that uh, hardship repayment on your credit right, cards. Right, right, yeah, because it has to look like hardship. I want you to go through, you need it somehow, I'm sorry, you seem, you're afraid to, in, a, in a sense to have money on your account. I want you to have money on your account. And, and we could do something different. We could do something along those lines of as soon as your check comes in, money gets automatically withdrawn to an investment account and you don't open that account. That's it. And you can spend on whatever you want with the money that you're being distributed, okay, for you, uh -huh. and everything else, it doesn't exist. So if you don't have the money, you don't spend it. That's a really great idea, is to have money go to an investment. An account that you don't open the account, you just open it once, and then it goes on its own. Yeah. And I, it's a monthly recurrent yeah. process that gets withdrawn. Yeah, I could, I could just use the same company that my mom uses for... Her investment. Yes, but the question that I have for you is, are you going to go into that investment account and withdraw because you have, oh, I need to go to New Zealand, I have uh, saved $2,000, and I'm going to take that money. Are you, be, be true to me. Are you going to do it? No, I don't want to take the money out of the investment. What I want is to have an amount that I save towards a vacation fund. When we think about your income right now, this is kind of how I would split it now that uh, we've discussed a little bit more. I would put, of course, the 375 that they take you, uh, that goes towards your credit card consolidation. I wouldn't pay for the cards right now. They're going to take care of this for you. Uh, you know, you're not going to have access to credit for quite some time. And again, I wouldn't do bankruptcy at this time because you're about to earn quite a bit of money. And potentially we think about investments and reliance on credit. You have an exit door right now that you're able to pay because you don't have payments that are flowing. Everybody is kind of uh, supporting you on IV. So if we move on to how much money is left for you to right now pretty much work with, mm -hmm. you're looking at around 1,100 or so. Okay, that's left in your pocket. Right. Of that 1,100, we're going to do right now because your expenses are so low, $500 per month that you're investing. Okay. I like that. $500 mathematically from what I'm seeing seems real. And how are we going to do that with this money? Because right now I don't think that at your age we should invest too heavily into aggressive positions. We're going to put it in what is called a high yield saving account. Oh. That gives you about 6% per year. Okay. okay, and that is going to allow you to have money that's readily available, and this is what is called an emergency fund. Okay, okay? and within that envelopes, you can buy them on Amazon. It's the last purchase on Amazon that I'm allowing. It's budget envelopes. You're going to have one at the back that is for travel. And I'm allowing you to save $100 per month for travel. Well, if there's still like a hundred dollars left in the account, because say I had there's okay, like okay, but are left. you gonna not use it? That's the thing. I'm scared. I'm scared with you because if it's money that's on your account, it disappears. So, do you think that you have the mental strength that will prevent you from using that hundred dollars to buy something digitally? Because that's what's gonna happen. Mm. When you have cash, you can't buy on Amazon. You can't buy on Timu. You're going to have to restrict yourself physically mm -hmm. of those options that exist. Well, if the but you need to start this way. 
Yeah. If there's no money in the account, then I can't Well, shop. there is going to be if you start saving on every month for your travel. Instead, I want you to save Maybe I physically. Maybe that, that account doesn't even exist. But is it the case? I don't think you can... I don't think you're going to do that. Yeah, I know. But if that money exists in cash, you have a physical vision right. of what you're saving. This is all... As I, an accomplishment. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. And you can reward yourself visually. Oh, I'm putting that $100 into the travel envelope. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by doing this... We are covering your debt. We are covering for some of your savings that you don't know exist. And we are allowing you to live a decent life in the guardrails that we've installed and still push towards having something that is travel related. Okay. This would work, but this is only going to be, this is basic 0.0, .0 okay? Once we are going to start earning some more money, from the pension of your uh, husband, potentially some things going on with the family and so on. That is where you're going to have to be. That's, that's where you call me back. Yes. Yeah. You and call then we me re back. We reformat the budget. And that is going to be a complete different strategy that we need to adjust mm -hmm. because you have to have so much money that's going to flow in. I don't want you to start putting money on shit all over the place. And then you end up with zero right. because you have the last golden door. It's the last frontier. And I don't want you to start thinking that you're going to be able to live crazy of that money. It's not a lot of money. I'm telling you. Mm. The $200,000 or so is not a lot of money for you to live no. for decades on. You have people that retire with much more than that and that are much more conservative than you are. Well, my husband's going to have a lot of money when he retires. Yeah, well, I mean, and he's been uh, in, in, in full transparency. He's been very generous in a way. Yeah, he, now, uh, I he don't is. Know. He's a nice guy. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. There probably is some emotional component behind some of your decisions, and I can't judge that by just speaking with you, you know, kind of the pension aspect and kind of not speaking about all of this. But that is outside of my... Um, that's outside of my control. That's not, that's yeah. not me to speak. Not what I'm saying, though, is install this cash system mm -hmm. and commit to it. Because I have created for you right now borders that has not a drastic 100, but I'm creating borders that is going to make it more challenging for you to access that money. The question that I have now is if I reach back to you in a month... Are you going to tell me, yes, Roman, I have opened this high yield saving account. Yes, I have bought a $30 uh, envelopes on Amazon. And yes, I'm now budgeting my life with cash from those envelopes. And when there is no money, there is no mass. Yes. Okay. Yes. Once you do that, you're going to find yourself, number one, to be in a better spot mentally because finally you feel like you're going to have a hold on your financial situation. And number two, this is going to be kind of a pre-course for when a lot of that money is coming in, you're not completely all over the place. And then we call again and I will do this for free. No problem. And we'll now put together a strategy as to how do you work with this money so that you don't spread it around like no tomorrow. Yeah. Do we have a deal? Yeah. Yes, we have a deal. Shake my hand. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I just need to label the envelopes. Yes. So figure out what I need to spend. Yeah. And, and and this is going to be up to you because generally I would say, oh, there is money for rent. There is money for gas. There is money for phone. In your case, everything is covered for the most part. Uh, yeah, the gas maybe a little. I okay. But please, like you see what I mean? I want you to start organizing your mind and approaching your finances structurally, not roam around, oh, Timu, I see uh, I see the shit that you buy on Timu. It's useless. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So organize your finances in a way. You know you have that budget to work with. I don't really care how you're going to spend that money because I know on the side that you're saving towards your travel per your travel things and also you're putting money on that high yield saving account. That's going to be a, a saving grace at some point. Okay? Start that mindset. Start that behavior. When it comes to miles... Screw that credit card, okay? Go to New Zealand on a free, on a free flight, if you can, 
because I don't want you to continue accruing interest, although you are accruing interest no matter what with the debt consolidation right now uh, or the debt uh, cancellation that consolidation is happening. Uh, but just don't, don't, don't overextend yourself. You know, stay within your stay within your guardrails, and you will be normally thank to your father, uh, thank, I'm sorry, thank to your mother, and thank to your husband in a decent spot. But if if you have the same behavior as you have today, mm -hmm. I see you here in ten years, and with much respect, you are done. Yeah. I so that's kind of my take on this. Do you have any questions or final words for me, Diana? Well, I have to say that I, I do think your idea of just having money go boop into an investment fund is brilliant. Um, I Really, I just, it never occurred to me that I could do something. Where Automatic. The, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be there. And then... I also really like the idea of only being able to pay in cash. That, that's, like that's you said, it. it's it. That's it. Okay, I've got $20. Hmm. I need the $20 to buy shampoo or, or toothpaste or, um, you know, and that's what this is for. That's it. Okay. No cards. You don't use any cards. The only card that you should use no, no is the debit card once a month to go to the ATM and pull the cash. Right. That's it. No online payment. You delete those apps. You put ad, uh, app blockers, app times. You just kill this. You, we need to kill this. But I'm still allowing you a lot of money for you to have fun around. One month. We have a commitment in front of this camera. Yes, we do. It, it's, it's, it's on tape. It's on tape. Yeah. Have the right mindset and um, I think you're gonna be you should be okay okay all right yes uh, yes because now I feel like I have a plan I, I love to hear that we'll be following with you guys thank you so much for following along this is probably going to be a lengthy episode <laughs> So thank you for following till the end. As always, we invite you to please like and subscribe. Until then, guys, I see you next time. A bientôt.